Hi, I'm Mandeep Singh, founder of Mandeeps.com and in this video we'll be working with our Authorize.NET extension for our Live Forms module. So let's get started. What we're going to do in this uh, in this video is uh, accept uh, an e-check or debit a bank account to accept payment from our customers. Uh, I have a simple form here where you can choose between two different games and we will be charging this amount to the customer and they'll be paying using their uh, e-check or using an ACH or basically we're providing the routing number and account number so let's get started uh, I already have the form set up uh, with the basic fields that are needed um, take a look at a different video on how to calculate fields and show the total we won't be covering that in this video but I'll be I'll be setting up how to accept e-checks in this particular video so let's get started I'm gonna go to options actions payments and authorize.net you can give this any action name you like. I'll just call this authorize. Uh, whatever the action name is, which is what you use for any tokens and subsequent actions. Uh, so I'll show an example of that as we go forward. Uh, add your login ID and your transaction key. You can get this information from authorize.net or refer to our documentation. I am running in sandbox or test mode, so I'll check that. And then here I'm going to say we're not using, we're not charging using credit card. We want to charge using a bank account, so we'll do that. Uh, I can skip all the billing address. It's not required for an e-check. For the payment information, the bank account type is uh, a drop-down that I created, which basically says whether it's a checking or a savings account. Name and account is a text box I created, which is the name of the name on the account. Their account number and routing number. And finally, uh, the total amount that we want to charge. So in my case, that's amount. So let's go ahead and save this. That's it for setting up the authorized.net action. I'm also going to go ahead and add a message to show if the payment goes through. Uh, I'll go ahead and paste this here. So I'm just simply going to say order placed. And as you can see, this authorize here is the name of the action name that I set up in the previous action. And I'm just showing a, a token called transaction ID. Uh, there's a bunch of different tokens that we can use, uh, and I'll show that uh, once a transaction goes through. Uh, here it's important that we only want to show the success mes message if the immediately prior action is successful. That means if the payment goes through. And then finally I want to show an error message as well if something doesn't go through correctly we do want to let them know that you know the order was not placed and in this case I'm just gonna say you know please contact us to place your order now for this we're just simply gonna say if any of the prior actions fail so if any prior actions fail then we'll show this message that's it we have our form set up so I'm gonna go ahead and um, give this a try I'm gonna say I want the PlayStation 4 game which is $50 and uh, uh, here's the account. Um, I'll get a test routing number and I'll just make up a account number for testing here and then an email address for our billing purposes. So that's it. I'm going to hit buy now and uh, there we go. The order was placed successfully and here's the transaction ID that was returned by authorize.net. So if I go back into manage I can see there's my submission and uh, if I click on the action results, um, here's the response that came back from authorize.net. Uh, the transaction was approved. And as you can see, all the tokens that are in transaction response are available for us to use in the message. In my particular case, I was just showing the transaction ID there. That's it for this short video. If you have any questions or concerns, please open a support ticket. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video.